Hi, Paul Hefty here. I want to talk about teaching of sport. We'll do an introduction here where I'll, we'll talk about some of the principles of teaching sport. Specifically, we'll get into technical skills, tactical skills, and then a plan for teaching. Let's go take a look. All right, for students with our 493W course, when you get to your final coaching portfolio, this is the next section there uh, where you're doing teaching plans. You can see you need to include templates where we have a seasonal plan. This can be a full calendar schedule, uh, but you'll see here you can do just a weekly snapshot to give you a picture of what your routine would be. And then a daily plan or practice schedule there too. Again, TRI for each of those, along with a template to give us a visual illustration. All right, so let's get into some principles of teaching sport. What we're gonna go through here real quick is some skills defined, technical and tactical skills, concept and holistic teaching and approach, whole part whole, which I'm sure you're heard of and have used or been part of, and then lastly, a games approach. To get started here and have a good foundation, we wanna uh, define skills and then how that's gonna transition into teaching. So a skill in sport is being able to execute the techniques required at the right time and place. And then a skill is the proficient use of those techniques and tactics to play your sport. So you're gonna to need to, as a coach, make sure you list all the different skills, and then we'll start to look at techniques and tactics to make sure we can teach those well. And this is where we get into conceptual teaching. It's about using uh, the games approach, which we'll talk about here at the end, uh, versus a traditional approach. And that's where you involve the athlete, you empower the athlete to be part of the decision making and we'll get into uh, what new research is showing where this is where you need to design your teaching where it focuses on this decision making ability and uh, problem solving for your athletes so again it's about working on those technical skills the movements and the tasks that are involved all while focusing on the big picture and this is that whole concept again the goal here is real simple is uh, your athlete should be able to know not only what they're doing, but also what the people around them are doing, the whole picture, like a coach. All right, when we get into technical skills, this is defined as the specific procedures to move one's body to perform the task that needs to be accomplished. Again, I'm gonna show you real quick here a video of my two uh, daughters, six and eight. Nella will go first. She'll have a very different technique, a ballet technique, and then Sylvie second. We'll go with uh, oh, Sylvia and Nella, rock jumping. Yeah, Sylvia this is an interesting example technique. Of what we mean by games. But here is Nella doing ballet. So you can see Nella going first here. Again, what I call ballet approach, where you do very controlled, uh, more artistic type of technique. I love the concentration see. and then Sylvia. Uh, Accomplishing the what she needs Good to job now. Fast. And this is my daughter, slow and so, da, yeah. da, 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 da. Next now is nice. And now so Sylvie. It's just the opposite. Take a different approach. Come on. Rock and roll, Sylvie. Fast. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and. That's it. The water feels good. Good job, Again, Sil. Nice technique. She's able to yeah. move one's body from the task that needs to be accomplished. Again, technique of skills. Games so approach. She's got an interesting technique. It's all her own. Next, then, is tactile skills. And this is where you let the, the players make decisions uh, on their actions that they're going to use in a game situation against opposing players uh, or teams and so forth. So again, it's about making decisions. It's not the strategy, but it's rather, it's giving them, like it says down here, some game sense and what they need to be successful uh, in their sport, the decision-making. So concept teaching, again, it's the idea to see the big picture, understand uh, big ideas here. And what we're trying to do is use again these technical and tactical skill development so that 
we can enable and empower the athlete to make those decisions, quality decisions, but also start to understand how everyone is involved in, in involves them around them. So one of the great approaches is to use a holistic approach. It's a whole part whole teaching progression, which everybody has used and experienced, but we'll just go through real quick with that. So a holistic approach is real simple. Gonna show the whole thing so they get the big picture concept teaching. Then we're gonna go ahead and break it down to those parts using the technical and tactical. And then we're gonna come back and do it live big picture again. Why and what we're doing here? A great example of this is um, I get to work with ninth graders uh, volunteering with football at State College High School in just like terms, which we assume uh, young athletes know, like contain, stretch, spacing, cutback. You have to go through and explain those. That's part of that concept teaching big picture. And then they start to understand when you start to teach and break it down into the technical and tactical why they're making the decisions when and what they need to do okay what this holistic and concept teaching approach does it enables and empowers the athlete to do what they got to do in a ball game so note big point you need 24 successful rehearsals or points of execution before that movement successfully starts to stick for that individual athlete so what that means number one that in practice, you need to physically experience these reps over and over for it to stick when you get into a live game situation. A great example is in football, everybody tells a quarterback to just throw it out of bounds when he's getting a pass rush instead of taking a sack. But if you haven't physically done that and then you're in a high stress environment, you're not going to do it in that ball game. So you actually have to practice this in a game like situation of throwing the ball out of bounds. Another one is, I'll show a diagram, is a four verts uh, pass where, let's say with a passing game, the quarterback's gonna complete it again. Let's talk ninth graders. 50% of the time, he's doing great. So that means to get those 24 successful reps, we're talking at 48, 50 attempts, and we're gonna throw to five different receivers. That means we've gotta do this one play 250 times to make sure we have a chance for this to stick with this athlete in a game situation to complete it to all five of those receivers. So again, this is an example of where you can empower them by having really well-organized lesson plans and a planned teaching progression. And lastly, you need to get reps. So here, let's look at the diagram. Here's your four verts, it's real simple. Just like it says, we got four receivers just going straight up the field. And then you can see the running back in the middle is going to check down what we call. So again, five receivers, 50 passes to get 24 of those quality rehearsals. That means 250 times. Wow. All right, whole part whole, real simple, big picture. They need to see it. They need to feel it. They need to experience. Uh, examples here is when you go into the beginning of your preseason, you need to go ahead and show them big picture. You can do this with film, but I believe just doing this as a uh, live uh, field, on the field or in the gym, whatever your, your, your situation is, kind of walk through, it's like a live video. Because you'll see here as we get going, it's important for people to see it as a participant, but also um, off to the side, different views. Then we'll break it down Again, the little things make all the difference. So this is where we wanna get into that skill development using technical and tactical uh, teaching with what we're doing. And then last, the whole, we're gonna do that big action. This is where we get into game challenging, competitive environments, controlled obviously for teachable moments, but this should be fun, should be competitive. Some examples here is it should be a mix of what we call good versus good. You. Uh, have a duty, but it also helps your athletes to match them up evenly so you have healthy competition and then make it realistic uh, at safe at the same time. Games approach then, real simple. We've been talking about this a bunch. Let's first look at a traditional approach. It's again, teaching the sport only after you practice basic technical and tactical skills. The games approach is where, again, you're going to do more of that, as it says here, a sandlock, 
flat or um, uh, just throw the ball out and play. It may seem really disorganized at times, but again, it will plateau. And again, the more you do these many games approach environments, again, with controlled situations, the more your athletes are going to make quality decisions that they're going to need to use in the actual games. So again, the emphasis is on learning the game through game-like practice activities and make it fun and enjoyable. It's fun. That's the other part about this. All right, let's get into teaching of some technical skills now where we'll look at uh, learning, some three stages of learning, and then how to apply some of those. All right, what we're talking about is, first, is you have to believe that coaching is teaching, and then we're talking about creating some quality learning for your athletes. So it all focuses on improvement. As it says down here, permanent improvement in the performance is the goal. And it should be the result of how you practice. So that's why we're trying to dissect this a little bit. So we set up some quality learning for your athletes. Historically, the old theory was you would do uh, develop these mental blueprints basically just through repeating the technical skill over and over. The example I give all the time in football is offensive linemen would hit a sled. Great repetition. The problem is, is it's more complex that, than that when you get into life situation. The sled does not move like a human being. And so we need to create these different experiences, uh, reactions, so that we can make quality responses similar to a game. So the new theory here, real simple, is athletes learn by extracting key pieces of information from these experiences to kind of create new rules that they can use then in the future. So the brain's kind of uh, abstracting bits and pieces that they can use with these movements when they get into a game environment. And the four real simple are the condition of the environment, the demands of the movement, speed, direction, force, the consequences as you perceive, you feel them, uh, you see them. And then last, how well they're performing the task. This is where we need to provide quality feedback. And what we'll talk about here, it's about giving feedback where you want to be, not focusing on what you did or didn't do correctly. Motor programs then is that complex set of rules that when called into action, allows that athlete to produce a movement. So. It's only a generalized plan of the movement. So what we need to do is coaches is help them develop good motor programs, again, by using a combination of technical and tactical skill development. The three stages of learning then real quick, is there a mental stage, practice stage, and automatic stage. With the mental stage, one thing that you need to do early on when we start to get into the parts of teaching you want to use single skills only one at a time and then you can build a multiple same thing with your practice stages start slow and then work to fast with the speed so again slow to fast is a trigger word and then last that automatic stage to get to where you're not thinking anymore so this is a nice three stages or phases of learning to use so teaching and technical skills Step one, you want to introduce it. Again, you want to be able to get the team's attention. So first thing is make sure you're ranging the team so they can all hear you and see you. And then you want to give names of the technique uh, so they can use these keywords when you get into the teaching and be more efficient. Step two, you want to demonstrate it, obviously. Again, you can show videos. You can ask a quality athlete to give the demo of it. Um, but another great thing is actually walk through it again, slow to fast, and then start to see it in the big picture. Again, always check and ask questions. Uh, don't assume they understand. So it's great to ask questions instead of just tell them what, they're, what to be doing. Step three, you just go practice the skill. And we wanna break this into the parts. So you wanna look at the different points of the movement starting from the beginning to the finish. Real simple, they talk about preparation phase and action phase, and then follow through. Great example is just throwing any type of ball. There's a preparation phase getting uh, set up, kind of a ready position I call in football. Then the action phase, you want to give cubers. Again, if we want to have a high uh, throw above the head with good, tight 
uh, mechanics. We talk about bringing the ball to the ear and then getting the elbow to the ear and the ball up. And then last will be the follow through. We could talk about simply to keep that elbow straight of throwing a dart and then bringing that hand down to the opposite thigh. So there would be an example of the three progressions that we just broke it into uh, teaching cue words and we can break it down going slow to fast. It helps concentrate on only one aspect at a time as you get started. When we start to go with correcting errors, again, you want to provide feedback, but you want to do this in a positive way, meaning we want to focus on what we want to do instead of communicating in the words we use in a negative way, talking all only about what was done incorrectly. Some better practice principles. One, have your athletes practice the right techniques. Real simple is if you don't pay attention to it, you're going to create bad habits. So right from the start, this is a reason why you want to go slow to fast. Have them practice it in game-like conditions. Um, this is part of that whole part whole. So we're going to do the whole slow. We're going to break it down into its parts with the technical and tactical skill development. And then when we come back, we can go ahead and practice them in those game-like conditions. So, uh, principle three, short, frequent with new teaching, new techniques. So a good example is um, attention span wise. I recommend you look at five minute periods for each of these segments. And again, it forces you to uh, focus on what is real important versus being multiple with what you're doing. And then number two, you can start to see the transition from each of the three phases. Step four, use practice time efficiently. Again, you're going to see when we talk about practice setup, you want to keep a fast tempo, a fast pace. And this is where once you start to create this routine of five minute periods and you stay on that routine, whole part, whole holistic approach, your athletes will be able to be efficient and your coaches will be, you'll be more efficient in your teaching. Optimal use of facilities and equipment. The goal here is to use as little equipment as possible. Use what's around. Great example in football is you can use the lines on the field as markers to see if they're stepping in the right place and so forth. So again, those are just simple examples for efficiency. Principle six, just make sure you're having some success with it. So a great example here I talk about all the time is maybe you have three things you want to accomplish in a half hour phase. The goal here is to always pick what is the number one thing at the end of the day you want them to have. So if you find you're struggling with number two and number three, and number one was that core thing you wanted to accomplish at the end of the day, just go ahead and scrap it and make sure at the end you're focusing on the one thing so that is really important for the athlete and for your team, but also then they can have some success instead of being average at everything. And then last, make practice fun. This is that games approach. You can do five minute team type uh, challenges or mini challenges, competitive environments at the end and break it up into three five minute periods and still have fun and still be very efficient and focused. Okay, now we wanna get into teaching tactical skills specifically, because um, this is where your focus needs to be. As I've mentioned, we'll talk about a tactical triangle, reading situation, some tactical knowledge, some decision-making skills, and then how to teach some of those tactical skills. All right, definitions again, tactics and tactical skills. Tactic is a plan to gain an advantage. Uh, the game's approach really wants to emphasize developing tactical skills. Again, that is basically your decision making your athletes are going to have to make to have success, success with their performance. So it's what you want to think of is trying to solve a series of problems um, is what you're trying to have them do. The tactical triangle, there's three things. We've got to read the situation. We got to acquire some knowledge and then we got to apply it. So reading the situation, you need to talk about what are they supposed to read and what are some of the problems that are going to come in so that they can make good coach, good choices. Example would be in today's modern football, offensive football is a thing called run pass options that the, you're asking the quarterback to do. So on a play, you're asking him to decide if it's going to be, we want to make it a running play and give it to a running back. We want to pull that from the running back and throw a pass. Again, real simple, they need to know who their read key defender is and then how you want them to react to that. A simple way to communicate that is 
If that linebacker fills, I drill. That means pass. If that linebacker sits, back gets. So it's making some simple teaching and coaching cues so that they can be consistent uh, with, with what their choices are. Cognitive skills of perception. This is just attention, concentration, perception. Again, to be able to recognize and interpret sensory stimuli. So perception would be as simple as, again, getting back to that read key defender, just like we said, fill or sit. And then attention to port and stimuli. And then last, concentration. It's as simple as this, is a lot of these things, you want to coach from the opposite side of the athlete so you can see what they are seeing. Where are their eyes? So what we're talking about with a lot of this is now adjusting our teaching kind of viewpoints so that we can see and train their eyes to make quality choices. How to do that? You want to minimize the distractions. So this gets into that small sided games. Soccer does this a ton. You can do this with all of your sports, how to incorporate. Help your, help your athletes identify what to attend to and what to filter out. So let's go back to the quarterback again. You have to have them focus on that one read key defender. So a great way to do this is you as the coach become that key defender in drills. Again, you can see their eyes, train their eyes, and you can manipulate the reactions and the choices they need to make. Develop pre-event routines. Again, this would be as simple as your preparation that you have your athletes do on a, on a regular basis to start this read and decision making. To analyze their play only when there is a break in the action. I talk about this all the time. We need to now coach on the run, meaning this is that free flow, just like my daughters going across the creek. We didn't coach them, we let them do it. And then afterwards, when you have a break in the moment, you can talk about where you want them to be again. Focus on the situation or their performance. Um, big thing there is we want to look at effort, but we also focus on right now is decision making. So I do this all the time with young quarterbacks. We may be doing a, a pass read where they could throw an interception every time, but as the idea is, is are they making the right decision? So let's not look at the throw itself. Let's look at this decision we're making. Is that throwing to the correct receiver? Lack confidence and self-esteem. Again, you have to create these moments and opportunities for them to have a success at the end of the day so that they keep that confidence. And then last, physical, developing their physical and mental skills. Again, goes back to the very beginning. What are the different skills or the most important ones for each of your athletes and maybe at different possessions and positions in team sports that they need to be good at, prioritize those. So we've been talking about tactical skills or decision-making, tactical knowledge is understanding rules, strategic and game plans, playing conditions, opponent's strengths and weaknesses, self-knowledge and tactical options. So it's a different thing. That's your tactical knowledge. All right, decision-making skills. We've got a couple methods here quick. Method one, teach the tactics in the whole, but then in the parts also. Do them both. Don't just do it when you get into your individual uh, parts of your drills. Method two, have the players observe decision-making in others. We talk about getting mental reps when you're not actually physically involved in the drill. You can do the same thing again, training your eyes, for example. Method three, if you can videotape and then go back and let them see themselves, that's hugely impactful. Method four, you want to simulate real game conditions. So this is where we use those different whole part, whole five minute periods. I always say a good start has a chance for a good finish. So this whole uh, setup um, is real important to having a good finish. Method five, control the feedback. Um, paralysis by analysis. What I mean here is, um, too much feedback can just turn into static and nothing is, is being heard. Um, I had a situation when I was a young coach. We were doing seven-on-seven seven passing. We had this great uh, player, Big Zim, who just came up to me and said, Hefty, it sounds like you're telling me to pick up my room, and I just want to make more of a mess. I don't hear anything. So what I did is I just went uh, the whole period where I didn't say anything until someone came and asked a question. And then we would sit down and talk about where we wanted to be with all of things. Great learning method. 
Method six, ask questions. The athletes need to be able to solve the problems on their own. That's what they're going to have to do in a game. So ask them questions to make them have to verbally solve the problem and talk through it. All right, let's go over some planning for teaching now. So we will identify the skills, how you know, make sure you know your athletes, analyzing the situation, establish some priorities, uh, selection of your teaching methods, and then planning practices and a final review. All right, step one, identify the skills. We talked about this right in the beginning. So look at a daily focus maybe with your practice, skills that you need, and an emphasis, all right? Um, look at your technical and tactical preseason list. I love this. Do a list. We used to do this with our staff. Everybody in their positions would have a list of technical and tactical skills, and we made sure we checked those off every practice. So by the end of preseason, we had covered everything, and then we could start to focus on what we needed to really – uh, develop in our uh, decision making. Physical and mental skills list. Again, create good goals from the start. Communication. Keywords, keywords, keywords are huge. So again, as we talked in the beginning, you want to be efficient. You need to have keywords that actually match the skill you're asking them to perform, but also you can use those in some of your drill names. Ethics and character skill development. Um, we don't want to overlook this. You can look at simple things to create quality decisions in their ethics and in their character development. Step two, know your athletes. Um, again, we want to make sure we pick essential skills that they can safely perform. Know what their uh, abilities are and match them up for success. Great way to do this is to do your pre and post testing um, so that we have an understanding in the offseason before we start. Live bullets, what I mean here is everything's different when we get into full speed game competition. So someone can look really good when we're drilling it and teaching it, but then we get in a competitive environment and go to a mess. So the more you can create these live bullet, bullet practice opportunities, the better chance every athlete is going to perform well in a competitive environment. And then technical skill assessment. Again, if you do a checklist of what the technical skills that this you're, at, you're asking your athlete to be good at and check those off, now we can make sure we're covering those on a daily basis, what you call fundamentals. Step three, analyzing your situation. First off, make sure you're doing this preseason, in season, and in the off season. We want to be consistent and constant in our evaluation. You want to have quality control methods. This is basically a way to assess what you're wanting to achieve. Are you actually achieving that? Uh, you can use statistics as benchmarks and goals is one way. When best to review, how much to review, and then how much to change. So again, these by doing these constant and consistent evaluations, then we can look at when, how uh, we can change things and need to change things. And then last, get down to what are the core concepts. What are you going to hang your hat on at the end of the day? And then lastly, what sticks. Usually, whatever they're performing by the end of the year, um, that's what's stuck with those athletes. And stay the course. If you've done the preparation to know, hey, these are the skills, the technical and tactical development we need to perform at a high level, then if you're not seeing them right away, keep doing it because eventually you'll get there. Stay the course. Step four, establish those priorities. This is the biggest thing. Just research your sport. Right? One of the biggest mistakes is uh, a lot of us are going to coach the way we were coached or taught, teach the way we were taught. That's great. You can take some great foundations from that. The sport, though, has evolved. Athletes have changed and evolved, and we need to research it and evolve also. So look at new information. That's where you make those adjustments. But again, you can still stick to your core, what you believe in. You got to teach what you know and what you believe in. Less is more. Uh, don't overthink it. You can have this preparation with all these checklists, but at the end of the day, get down to that focus concept or focus skill that you need to accomplish. Don't be too cute or too creative in practices. Uh, this is where routine is good. It'll help you be efficient. It's going to be boring sometimes, but it helps you be efficient and effective in what you're doing. And remember this, there's no plagic, magic plays or techniques. Go back to your fundamental skills, your core concepts, your core ta tactical decision-making development you need to do so you can stick to your priorities. So make a plan, research it, 
and be organized. All right, step five, just looking at your teaching style. We've talked about the games approach versus traditional. Is there a place for both? Yes. Um, usually at the beginning um, of any phase of a team coming together, you're going to need more of a traditional, and then you just progress to a complete games approach at the end. We call this the four stages of learning of forming and storming, usually taking a step back. And then we go into performing at a, at a um, quality level to then normalizing where we perform at a very high level. So again, look at your leadership style, your philosophy. Think about how much control you need versus empowering the athletes. The more you can empower them, the more realistic games approach you're giving them. Plan your practices. Um, I can't say this enough uh, when I do consulting. The number of times I see programs going out to the field without an actual practice plan. The, the goal here is this, is when you actually develop a practice plan, then you've done some organization. You've put some real thought into it. You've got the documentation you can use in the future and taking notes during the situation. But more importantly, now you have a cheat sheet. Um, because you even with that, sometimes you forget something. But if you have that with you, then you have a better opportunity to be very successful and focused and efficient when you actually go to your teaching. So that creates real teaching, real managing, real leading. A great example of somebody in the sport is Eddie Reese, who's the uh, swim coach at the University of Texas, but he's also uh, done our Olympic teams, just as phenomenal at uh, and a great model of this. Practice lesson plan design. Again, we want you to design a drill and a daily lesson plan. So you'll see the templates. I'll show an example here. I want you to make sure in that that somewhere you use some games approach, you use some concept teaching, holistic teaching, that whole part whole, and we involve both technical and tactical skill development. You'll use this with your final uh, portfolio. You'll need this template as a concrete visual illustration of how you're going to do practice and how you plan it. So here would be just a template. Um, you can change this however you want, but you can see you've got the organization and management at the top. We've got that focus or goals. Um, and then we start to get into drill names so we can be efficient with cues, teaching cues, and then always safety. And then in the bottom then, you can start to do diagrams to uh, give uh, examples of how to set up some of those things, a visual, and then a, a review. You want to always take notes uh, so you can continually look in at ways to improve. All right, a seasonal practice plan clinic then is you want to take, use this with the portfolio, use these steps just to develop a week long plan. This kind of gives us a snapshot of how you would do things in season. And then what we'll do for this one, make it simple, it's a sport where you have a contest on a Saturday, so you've got the week, and this is uh, your first contest after two weeks of a preseason practice. So one, identify a daily focus or an emphasis. Two, your approach, games are traditional. Three, how you're going to achieve uh, this approach. Four, let's look at some of those skills now, mental and physical, technical and tactical. Let's look at ways we're going to evaluate during the week, and then different learning and teaching methods we use and why. Um, this is great. You can adjust this five-day plan to your sports that are unique, again, to your needs, your demands of your sport. All right, and then this would be the template here. Just fill this out. You don't need to put much in those boxes, but you can see it's a five-day progression. And you can go ahead, each of the areas then on the left you need to address to game day on Saturday at the far right, and Sunday is your off day. All right, I know this was a lot, but this gives you complete intro teaching to sport. We broke it down into those technical and tactical development, but more importantly, how to implement it into a practice plan uh, for a weekly snapshot for your season, and then also a daily plan and how to develop that. Thanks.